had our pump completely rebuilt with the gaskets and seals. Now we're on our test stand. We're going to have to make our calibration adjustments to it. We're going to cover three or four basic steps. One of them is going to be timing. <clears throat> we have to set the pump with a timing pin and a timing mark so it can be timed to the motor. We're looking at, at a 12 to 13 degrees before top dead center running on this one. So first thing I'm going to do is set Number one, in relation to my timing pin, I'm going to make sure that in my firing order, which is 1, 5, 3, 6, 2, 4, they're 60 degrees apart. Once we get the timing set, all six cylinders balanced there, we'll set a timing pin for our 13 degrees. Then we'll go on to the fuel portion of it. First thing we'll do will be the phase timing. Break my bleeders on my injectors loose. Start my high pressure. This will actually take my delivery valves off their seats against their springs. I'll get fuel flow out of my injectors. As each plunger comes up, as soon as it covers this, the filling ports for the barrel, fuel will stop coming out of the valve here. That'll indicate beginning of injection. Base timing has to be done in a big rack position. So 12 degrees. If I was to time this in a full start position, I would be in a retard for start position, and my timing and my timing pin would be off. I have fuel coming out of all six of my injectors. That indicates the filling ports are closed. The only place that fuel can go out now is being pumped out through my injector. I'm going to set my dial indicator, my green wheel, I should say, at zero. That indicates number one, the beginning of the next time I check five, see if it's at the 63 mark. Six and a half degrees past. Install my timing pin, adjust it. When he puts this on the motor, put the timing pin in, it will have already fired six and a half degrees pump timing, which is half of engine timing, which will relate to 13 degrees before top dead center for the engine. Okay, by loosening my window here. That will slide up and down along with my camshaft. So I dial in my six and a half. Remove the pin, keep from bending the arm. That is the timing position. This is the running position where the pin is not engaged with the pin. Okay, now we're going to set our fuel, balance it cylinder to cylinder using our drop tubes. I have to 
let all my foaming settle down to get a true indication of my cc's of delivery. So I'm going to double my readings on there to get what I write on my spec sheet. I'm looking for 255 cc's. One twenty would represent two forty. One twenty five represents two fifty. One thirty registers two sixty. We'll set this one at two hundred fifty five. Record my delivery for future reference. RPM check. This will represent a short backup check. starting fuel. Check my rack. I need 21 millimeters of travel, which is my full rack travel. I'll see at what RPM it goes from my Android stop, which is 10 millimeters, to full rack travel, which is 21. I need it to be around 250 RPMs to travel. Gradually increasing my speed, I can tell that it goes out of my front position to 4 300, which is in my stack. I go down to my starting speed of 100 RPM to top. Let's see if I have enough fuel to start my motor. have to take it off the stand now, drain all the fluids out of it, and we'll do some of the buttoning up finish work. I'm back in my build up room. The only thing I have left to do in here, short of capping it up, I have to make sure these are all torqued in. If they aren't torqued in, they can back off, come loose, break the studs. Until my timing pointer comes around, engage it with a timing pin. The pin engaged, if this engine is installed in this position, it'll be timed for 13 degrees before top dead center on the engine. I'll cap my drive hub loose so I don't break my pin by knocking my drive hub off. I'll now reinstall my rack cap. This is a test fitting. I'll install a bracket on my governor, bushings for my return spring, and a lever for on the engine. Yeah, he didn't want a solenoid. 
Tyler called him and asked him about that. He's going to run a shut off here. So he'll just have to design that himself. Yep. And we'll put this lever on it. So he can run it here if he wants to, down here if he wants to. Yep. And with that lever, I can still put this on it, which is basically a return spring. This bracket here has a hole there to engage the return spring. This actually can go to here for a remote. Like a cable in it? Well, like a cement truck, for example runs half throttle for the PTO and remote speed adjustment like a knob or whatever so you have. So the run while you're yeah. sitting in the yeah. target spot. You might not want that, that's fine, but it does have a place for a cable yeah. and attachment if he wants to rig it up himself. That's all going to be up to him. It's going to be up to him how to hook his throttle yeah. into a system. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. yeah. But it will have a return for idle and it will have, let's say, that on it. You don't even have to use that if he doesn't want to. Perfect.